Hey up everyone, what's going on and welcome back to Sheffield United. First and foremost, Happy New Year. Welcome to 2021 everyone. I hope you're already enjoying it more than last year. I'm recording this on New Year's Eve, so I have no idea if there's anything any different. Let's hope so. Now, what is different is our, well, indifferent I should say, is our form. Uh, two draws, one win, two losses. Since we last met, of course, the double three nils over Braga and Aston Villa, we had a creditable nil-nil against Real Madrid away from home where the only thing of note is two former Barcelona players got booked. Chelsea just injured half our team. Juventus put us to the sword a little bit. Yeah, that's probably the worst performance of the year so far. And then Everton. I'll take Everton nil-nil as a bit of a stabiliser result. That led into beating Burnley 4-1, where four signings of this summer, technically, because Collado was a permanent, scored. Esposito off the bench, getting a goal as well. That's his first one for us as well. So we'll take that. 4-1. Their goal was a worldie, by the way. I think it was pretty much their only major chance, so they took it. But today's all about Leicester, who were 20th, and knocked us out of the Carabao earlier this season. And, uh, well, that old zoo animal zebra. Two, two redemption matches, in a sense. Two teams we lost to away from home in cup competitions already this year, ready to get our Avengers on. Now, in theory, we should be able to weaken a little bit for this match in preparation for the midweek tussle in the Champions League. So we will do probably that. And how that will look is as follows. Chakra in goal, Meza at left back, Badia Shile, Fafana, they're fine in centre defence. Nacho at right back, Gagliadini and Gomez in those midfield positions. Jota, Jones and Callado with Cavalou in up front. Now, that striker role, not really too much of a problem. They tend to stay reasonably well conditioned. So I'm happy to keep Dominic up there. I've had a word with him, told him to get a few more goals. He's only got two this year so far. He's actually been outscored by Callado so far, although of course he was out for three matches. I've had a word with Neymar. He put in a player of the match performance against Burnley, so I'm happy with that, though he will be rested here. A few tweaks to the old system as well, a few tweaks to personal positional instructions on top of that. It seemed to do a trick against Burnley, but it was Burnley. So realistically, it's the Juventus match. That will probably be the best gauge of whether or not any of these tweaks are of any use. Because again, Leicester, 20th. Still Schmeichel, who's got to be about 36 by now. So early highlights. It looks like Gomez is running over to take a corner here. He is indeed four, well, one minute in as he takes it. Cavaloon's there, Fafana's there. Elvedi clears. That was a hectic old corner and that's seen that one out already. But an early corner, another corner highlight. I did mention that in yesterday's episode. Uh, we did change up the old set pieces and it does seem to be yielding a little, well, at least more highlights, if not necessarily goals. We've had three bookings. Just going to tell them to stop being so rash with tackles, please. Thank you for that. Three bookings in the first 15 minutes. Can we calm down? Thank you very much. Gomez, two of them got booked in the same minute somehow. That's a bizarre deflection, but Jota deals with the, deals with the loose ball by putting it in the goal. It was Gomez's missed interception that led to the goal, the text is saying, but is it because he slid in and somehow deflected it towards... Gomez is outside the box, so I don't know how he's managed that. No, it's Sianchi who's diverted it into Jota's path. And he's, well, he's finished the opportunity. His first goal for the club as well. So the last five goals scored by new signings. Just try and think. I can't remember if Brozovic or Witzel have goals yet, but if they haven't, I think they might be the only ones, new signing-wise, that haven't scored yet. Meza as well at left back, but I don't really expect that of a left back. And of course, Nacho on the right back as well. Izzo scored in the last match, but yeah, Nacho obviously hasn't yet. Or Walker. Actually, basically half my squad haven't scored yet. That? Good God. I looked away for a second and then suddenly the ball was going towards my goalkeeper. I didn't actually see what happened there. It was in the corner of my eye. Well, deservedly on top with 19 shots in that first half. The one thing these new instructions have been doing seemingly in these last two matches is breaking down these sort of weaker sides a little bit better. It feels weird to call Leicester a weaker side, but they have been poached of most of their talent. Only Sonchu and, well, an ageing Vardy remain pretty much. Of course, we took two of their players. Nacho, Jones. Well, it's gone in. Uh, Schmeichel. Well, he's getting on a bit and he's had a bit of a senior moment there as he seems to have forgotten how to do a goalkeeping. As Curtis Jones pops his third in for the season. He's now outscoring Dominic Cavalloon as well. Now, Jones, guess it there. Yeah, Schmeichel, don't know. Casper, mate. He might as well have been a friendly ghost there because it's just passed straight through him. Uh, Leicester building out from the back here. Dubois finds Nonato. Lewis Cook. 
an acquisition in fact. Don't think there was cookers as good in this year's game seemingly. Gomez drills it at the goalkeeper. That was the highlight. And 54 minutes on the clock. This has been played around outside. Well, it was being played around, played around outside the 18-yard box before we decided to go all the way back and build to the opposite side. Meza puts Jota through again, and that was really well worked, actually. <laughs> Watch the cut wall, mate. We can't do with any more injuries. We were actually without our right winger, any right winger for in, for one match. Thankfully, Cardo's injury wasn't too long, and he came back for the one that followed. But yeah, we did lose both right wingers at the same time, which wasn't fun. And we are without two players right now as well. Brozovic is injured along with De Siglio, I think it is. Two of the Italians, which leaves Cagliadini alone, who's himself just returned from injury. I lie, of course, because Armando Izzo is here as well now. Well, I'm glad I didn't make three changes there. Well, that actually, that is really irritating because I just took Nacho off, who was capable of filling in in central defence. Thankfully, Walker can fill in as well, sort of. Actually, what's better here? Apparently my goalkeeper is a better right back than my left back. Curious. Ah, Meza can go in the middle. That's the solution. Meza in the middle, we'll carry on a left back. Problem solved. Except for the fact we've lost Badia Chile for a match against Juventus. That's kind of massive. Now I think about it. Just praise the lads a little bit more. As I thought that I'd gone in. Everyone on a 7. Oh, well, as soon as I said that, of course. And a nice comfortable 3-0 again. Tell you what though, Leicester with an expected goals of 1.28. Chaka with a clean sheet. Good work from him and goal. Yeah, pleased with, pleased with everything about that one. Three more points in the Premier League. Pops is into fifth for the time being. Man United have only played nine games. I presume they just haven't played this weekend and have a game in hand in general. West Brom are still unbeaten. Three to four weeks. That's actually, apart from Juventus, I don't think that's horrible. Brighton, Braga and West Ham. And he should be back for Real Madrid. Because, of course, everything's slightly early this year because of Qatar. Three weeks, he might just be back in time. He'll be tight. Two goals, two goals from the new lad. They keep asking me if Alex Callado is value for money now. Five million is not splashing out. I spent 22 on Marcelo Brozovic and he's been distinctly average so far. Ask me about him. Actually, no, Man United did actually play alongside us and so they've just got two games in hand for whatever reason. Which basically means we're comfortably fifth because I do expect them to pick up at least one point from those games, I would imagine. I don't know who they're against. Actually, that being said, we're level on points with Tottenham and they only have two more goal difference, so we could easily leapfrog them into the Champions League places anytime soon. Looking at Liverpool with the game in hand, though. There's other teams that could join us on 21 points, but their goal differences are slightly worse. It's very early in the season, though, so looking at games and hands and things isn't necessarily a useful thing. I actually don't know what Real Madrid did against Braga when we were playing Juventus because I was too busy paying attention to us being completely picked apart in all areas of the pitch. So I don't know. I don't know if they drew in the end. No, they did end up winning, looking at that table over there. Apparently Juventus have lost against Udinese in the midweek, well, in the midweek, at the weekend. So they might be a little fragile after that defeat. I doubt it. Oh, that's irritating. Radovanovic has a work permit now and I've sent him out on loan. I could bring him back in January. Kind of depends on what happens with... He's not really good enough yet. I might as well leave him out there. Two goals in ten with a 6.58. Might need to do a bit better. Although, bizarrely, he's 0.2 average rating worse than Calvert Lewin, who also has two goals and 10 in total matches. Not sure how that works. So, James Madison back, Marcus Edwards mostly back. Of course, two of the players I played against Leicester are unregistered for this. So that was nicely worked on my part, I guess. So then, Chakra and goal were Gary Hellander, Fafana, Walker, Burge and Gomez, Neymar, Jones and Callado with Calvert Lewin up front. Of course, Neymar's the only one on a yellow card warning. Though Alba on the bench, 6.28 is his average. That's not great from Geordie. I think I had a word with him last time I looked as well. So left back in general being problematic. But since we tweak things, Meza's had a couple of good games playing him in the Premier League just because he's not registered in the Champions League. Yeah, he's been, he's been quite solid, has Meza. Is he getting better? He is already getting better. That's what you like to see. Up to a 16 on marking. I think that was only 15 before. We shall submit that team and we shall send it out. Juventus are the team that acquired Tielemans, by the way, from Leicester. I just love the fact that Leicester are completely licensed now and they're still rubbish. Why has Ronaldo got a different name? For a second, I got really excited he wasn't playing. Don't know who this lad De Winter is either. No Arthur. Okay, so De Winter's playing left back. You can play basically everywhere. And, uh, well, I dare say that's exploitable. Ten tackling on the lad. But Kenny on the right is a curious choice as well. I mean, he's got the tackling ability for it. Very good player, but not really a wingback. 
The first highlight of the game goes the way of Curtis Jones, seemingly, who's just charged up the entire pitch. Neymar's not at that back post, but Burr should gather the ball. Ruggeri to deal with it now. Gomez finds Neymar. Oh, beautiful ball through. Can Neymar finish? No, he cannot. Chesney says an absolute sitter, but I think that's actually just more of a really good save than anything. Neymar will put the resulting corner in. Oh, and a good chance by Cavill Lewin. So two good saves by Chesney in a row, actually. Forgot to really look at the bench. Esposito played the under-23s match directly before this. Don't know why. I didn't tell him to. Ruggieri, Jones, headed on. Back out to Burge, I think. Yep, back to Gomez. Walking out on this right-hand side. Finding Callado. Uh Bonucci just kicks Jones and gets a clearance at the same time somehow. Neymar's being put through once more. He's rushed into the box. He's pulled it back for Cavalier. And yes, mate, you needed to score. He said he was going to try. And, uh, well, try he has. One good chance already saved by Chesney from Dominic, but this time Dominic bests the former Arsenal keeper, Neymar. Great work from Neymar just to basically run to the entire end of the pitch and pull it back for Dominic to slide into the far right. Great placement from Dominic. That's what we've been missing. Like, I dare say we've not really scored a lot. Like, our goal difference in the Premier League is sort of okay, mostly thanks to getting three goals over on Burnley and Aston Villa now, and Leicester as well. So yeah, yeah, three three goal margins in a row have helped our goal difference in the Premier League. But before that, yeah, it was a little worrying, our lack of goals. And of course, we didn't score against any of the big sides in that run either. Fafana is probably fouled by Benucci there, who is injured and probably shouldn't be playing. I want to focus on this right side. I really do. I'm telling him to play down. I'm playing him, telling him to play down the middle generally. But Benucci's injured on a six point four. De Winter is not a first team player. I feel like our best opportunities are through there. Although every time there's a highlight involving Benucci, it's him kicking the ball from one of our players' feet. Walker is going to give that to Jones. Jones to Gomez. Gomez to Burge. Now Burge finds Neymar. Cavalier. This is a lovely play. So far, Cayado of all people has slipped through there. And it's 2-0. Oh, revenge against Leicester has been had. That's not a sentence. That's not good English, I don't think. But revenge against Juventus is, well, in progress at this stage, but this is wonderful. First touch football, proper tiki tack stuff there. As Kayado, who wasn't having a great game up to this point, 6.3 was his rating, is probably now just shy of a seven as Ruggieri gets injured. I mean, thankfully that's the one position where we've got three players and a decent fill-in player in the form of Hellander, if necessary, but Alba on the pitch, time for him to redeem himself. I'm actually gonna talk him up. I have faith in you, mate, because he's better than the six point, less than 6.3 average he's been on so far. The long throw, not great though. Don't know why he's trying to throw it long either. That from, I don't know who that was at fault for that terrible pass, but Burge deals with the charging player. Can we stop passing it to them? Particularly as we're passing it backwards and to them. Diabala goes close. Walker right backs on a 6.4. Do have Nacho on the bench. None of the attacking players are necessarily playing badly. Although some of them have just got very tired very quickly there. I think Walker's going to have to come off. He's on a 6.3. That ball sort of bypassed their players entirely. They, a couple of their players could have got on the end of that if they'd been alert. But it's made its way out to the right-hand side now instead. Callado is going to put Cavalloon through or attempt to. Dominic did seem to be a little bit impeded as Chesney now hoofs the ball up. Alba's under it. Jones brings it down and gives it away. Can we, can we stop doing that? Trying to switch it over to the left where Neymar gathers that really nicely, actually. Get Neymar on a 7.6 today. Doing well, about to get another... Never mind. <clears throat> we'll, we'll forget about that one in the... Yes, his rating actually went up briefly after doing that. Jones, who played the last match as well, is going to come off for Madison and Nacho's on a right back for the slightly bad Walker today. And got to be said, looking at the match stats, we're good value for this win. Did come at the cost, out, did come at the cost of Regeri getting injured. He was having a good game as well. Alba finished with a 6.8, which is about 0.5 more than anything he's had so far this year. Nobody gave us a chance. Historic win. Beautiful work. And, importantly, puts us joint top because it looks like Real Madrid were held by Braga. Ten-man Real Madrid. Or Carabag just got put to the sword by Benfica. How is Man United's group going? Because that's by Munich Lazio in their group. Uh, they are currently top of their group and elect. <laughs> yeah, sorry. As things stand, though, by in a third. Three months for a Gary. That, annoyingly, makes things... Somewhat easier. Cavaloon had played 10 hours without scoring, somehow. Kayado was injured during that match for three to four weeks. Why was I not told? 
Yeah, I do suppose six games in a row is about 10 hours, is it not? So yeah, Cavalo in after 10 hours of football gets his third goal of the year after scoring twice in two games following his return from injury there or thereabouts. So hopefully that's put him in good stead for the future now. And of course, we'll bring things back for the final game against Real Madrid and then the derby against Leeds before the break for the Qatar World Cup. Two teams on seven points at the top of our group with Real Madrid one point behind. Everything will be to play for still in that final game, no matter what happens with Braga in between. So that should be an exciting Champions League group finale there and, of course, a feisty derby to boot. So until next time, ta -ra.